Maca as guides. <laughs> hey everyone, Maka here playing Death Loop, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to grab the Spice of Life achievement slash trophy, and there are 10 ways to die. We're gonna die by all of them. We can drown, fall, choke on gas, depressurization, blown up, shot, stab, ground up, killed by a rocket, and obliterated by a reactor. Let's get started with the really, really easy ones first. We're gonna grab our first three by going to Carl's Bay during the morning. The first one we can grab is drown, just jump into the water off the side of the cliff. The second one we can pretty easily grab here is for fall damage. Just hop up on a tall building and then jump off. It might take you more than one jump depending on how high you jump from but after you fall and hit the ground really hard, that will be a fall damage death. We're already making some progress. Once we spawn back after taking the fall damage, we will die to poison. The best and easiest way to do this is to just choke on the gas inside of Hangar 2. This is where you would normally find Harriet and you can find some poisonous gas near the bottom of the base. You can also eliminate Harriet, grab the pistol, and basically poison yourself, but this one's probably the fastest and easiest way if you're just making natural progress through the game. It's probably recommended that you sneak into the base just to make sure enemies aren't shooting at you, but make sure you die to the poison and not anything else. Next up, we will succumb to fatal depressurization. This is easily possible in the complex during the afternoon. And what you'll wanna do is go to the Wenji lab. And if you get spotted by a camera, it will basically start an alarm that will depressurize the area around the reactor. And basically just wait here near the bottom. And as long as enemies aren't shooting at you, you will naturally take damage over time, eventually dying to depressurization. Next up, we can die by an explosion. Basically, we're just going to cook a grenade in our hand and do it to ourselves. You don't have to do it to yourself. You can obviously get it done by an enemy, but this is gonna be the obviously fastest and easiest way to do it. If you just hold a grenade in your hand and cook it till it explodes, it'll usually take three and that'll be five out of 10. Last but not least, while we're here, let's get shot, and that's gonna be six out of 10. This one's really easy. You probably will do it by accident if you play the game enough, but just let enemies kill you, making sure they kill you with a weapon and not with another means. Next up, we'll go to Updom during the evening and we'll grab two of them here. You have to get stabbed, so at the evening time, there should be a couple of different enemies running around with melee weapons. So basically, you'll just alert them and make sure that they kill you via a melee. Make sure you're working your way towards the comedy club though, that's where we'll need to be for the next one anyways. But you should be able to find a couple of different enemies with melee weapons uh, to die from. Next up, we'll have to get ground up by going through the meat grinder. This is basically inside of the comedy club. If you did the Alexis assassination, you'll know exactly where we're going, but you're basically gonna go into the comedy club, activate the button. Once you activate the button, it'll open up the trap door on the stage, and then you can jump into the meat grinder. You'll have to be kind of quick to make sure you can do it on time, but once you are in the meat grinder, you will die, and then we only have two left. The next one's a little bit involved though. So this next one is by far the most involved one out of all 10 and it's for getting fried by a rocket. And this is available in Updom during the noon and you'll wanna head to Condition Detachment where you can take out Charlie. And you'll wanna go to the second floor and you'll want to be stealthy because you have to overhear a conversation between two Eternalists. The goal here is to overhear a conversation between these two enemies, and this will allow you to unlock a new command for 2-bit, which is the robot that is available in this area. Hmm. 
So right around the corner here, we're sneaking up on the enemies, and these are the two enemies that will have a conversation that will reveal the crucial information that we need to know in order to do the rest of this strategy. To our advantage. Lieutenant? If we steal their batteries, we could power up the engine. And burn them to a crisp as we talk. Cunning Lieutenant. Sir. At the end of the conversation, you'll get a notification that you can activate the rocket and you can take out the two enemies. And now we want to go to 2-bit and choose to activate the rocket. We won't be able to do it quite yet, but this is an important step. You don't have to remain stealthy, but you definitely want to take out some enemies and doing so with the least amount of resistance is probably best. You don't want to waste your time and accidentally die to a gunshot, but just keep taking out the enemies and working your way through the base. Once you find the 2-bit door, you can activate it to go inside and then speak to the robot and try to activate the rocket. You won't be able to because you don't have the batteries you need. So that's going to be kind of the next part of our little walkthrough here. So there are a total of three batteries and you'll need to insert all three of the batteries into the rocket. And then once you do that, we can come back to 2-bit in order to actually launch the rocket and we can get fried by that rocket once it's launched, so that's our next step here. Having the base cleared of enemies will make this really easy, by the way. You'll be able to just basically run around and sprint everywhere you need. The batteries are pretty easy to find as well. Once the three batteries are placed, the machine is ready. Head back to 2-bit and you can now activate the rocket. Once the rocket is successfully activated, you want to basically run straight at it. It will begin to take off. And if you are close to it, when it takes off, it will fry you up. And this will be our ninth out of 10. Again, this one is by far the most involved one, but it isn't really that bad. This will also unlock you the game over achievement slash trophy for killing Charlie within the rules of conditioned attachment.
Last but not least, we'll go to Fristad Rock during noon, and this one's pretty easy. We have to get obliterated by the reactor. We're going to make our way into Fia's bunker. Once you alert enemies inside of the bunker, this should trigger a reactor meltdown. You want to hide and make sure that you don't die from any of the enemy attacks, and you're basically waiting on a timer for the reactor to explode. You also have the option of actually going up to the reactor itself and cutting the wrong wire, and then you'll notice that the progress on the reactor starts moving. That means it'll explode. It's pretty obvious when it's about to explode, and when it does, it will kill you and hopefully unlock the achievement or trophy. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. Make sure to drop a like. Special thanks to AJ for capturing the video. Special thanks to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. And hopefully I see you soon. Peace.